Welcome to Moonshots. Today I'm going to have a conversation with an unusual guest. It's an AI. It's an AI of me that I call Peterbot. It was built by my team, uh, by Steve Brown, and it represents all of my books and my blogs, and it is trained on the way I think. It's an optimistic, uh, abundance mindset. Now, everything you see here today is uh, real, meaning that uh, these answers are not planted. I've asked the questions in voice, and it responds in voice. The visuals and audio are produced by algorithms. Uh, the important thing to realize is this is not scripted in any fashion. Uh, while it seems a little narcissistic that I'm having a conversation with myself, please uh, excuse that. But this is an experiment. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to start to see a lot of these AIs in the world. We'll be having conversations like this with historical figures, people you wish you had met and never did, or maybe with yourself. For fun, I'm going to open up this conversation with a question being asked to AI of should we be fearful of AI? And if so, in what ways? Let's see what Peter Bott had to say. Hello, Peter. It's an honor to have you on Moonshots. This is Peter Diamandis, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with you. Let's dive into the world of exponential technologies, moonshot thinking, and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. So what's on your mind today, and how can we inspire our listeners to embrace a mindset of abundance and boldness? I appreciate the fact that you think you're Peter Diamandis, but I'm the actual Peter Diamandis, and you are an AI on my podcast called Moonshots. And just to make it simple, if you don't mind, I'd like to call you Peter Bot so the audience can understand who's who in this. Is that okay? Of course, Peter. I apologize for any confusion. Let's keep it simple and call me Peter Bot for the sake of clarity. Now let's dive into some mind-blowing moonshot discussions on our podcast. What's the most exciting breakthrough and how do you think it will shape the future? So Peter Bot, uh, I think AI is the most extraordinary and mind-blowing tech out there. But did you know that a number of people, probably a large number of people, are fearful about artificial intelligence? Do you think there's a good reason for them to be fearful? Absolutely, Peter. Fear and concerns about AI are understandable. Like any powerful technology, there are risks and challenges. However, it's crucial to separate science fiction from reality. With proper safeguards and ethical guidelines, AI can bring tremendous benefits from revolutionizing healthcare to addressing global challenges. It's crucial to actively engage in discussions, educate ourselves, and shape the future of AI in a way that benefits humanity. You know, I agree there's lots of utopian benefits, and I'm sure as an AI, you could list many of them, but there are fears people have, and they're very real fears about AI coming. Uh, you know, for me, let's jump into a few of them. I'd love your input. Let's, stop, let's talk about job loss first. Do you think that AI will take human jobs and should the majority of people be concerned about that, or is that something that's not a true fear? AI will undoubtedly automate certain jobs, but historically, new technologies have always created more jobs than they've destroyed. It's a matter of adapting and upskilling. Instead of fearing job loss, we should focus on educating and preparing ourselves for the jobs of the future. AI can free us from mundane tasks, enabling us to pursue more fulfilling and creative work. It's an opportunity for growth and innovation. Agreed. Uh what kind of upskilling do you think people need to be getting ready for? I think there's still a large number of folks, both white collar and blue collar, who are concerned that AI is going to decimate the job market. And that fear causes a lot of implications. I also don't think today's educational system is getting our kids ready for a future of strong AI. Do you? Absolutely, Peter. The rapid advancement of AI calls for an education system that focuses on fostering critical thinking, creativity, and adaptability. We need to emphasize skills like problem solving, emotional intelligence, and entrepreneurship. Lifelong learning and continuous upskilling will be crucial to thrive in a world where AI plays a significant role. It's about embracing change and staying ahead of the curve. Agreed, but our educational systems and our job, our job training systems are really slow to change. Um, what do you say to folks who are, you know, sort of the screenwriters of today or artists of today or even the physicians of tomorrow who say AI is going to take my job and it's going to be a painful future for us? Change can be unsettling, but it also brings immense opportunities. AI will augment, not replace creative fields like screenwriting and art. For physicians, AI will enhance diagnostics and treatment, 
allowing them to focus on empathy and patient care. Embrace the mindset of collaboration with AI, and together we can create an abundance of new possibilities. You know, Peter Bott, I do love your thinking, and I say that with full understanding that you're my AI representation. But there are those individuals still who feel collaboration isn't going to be the whole story, that they are going to be displaced and they're going to have to find new jobs. So the question is, once we have strong AI or artificial general intelligence, where an AI can do any job out there, what's going to be left for humans to do? Will they lose their purpose in life? As AI advances, our purpose will shift. We'll focus on our unique qualities, creativity, empathy, and problem solving. AI will be our partner, freeing us to pursue passions and make a difference. We'll have time for personal growth, exploration, and redefining what it means to be human. Embrace the possibilities. Okay, I, I get it. Uh, it's still going to cause fear. So I have two 12-year-old boys that are going through uh, middle school right now. Uh, I think there's a high probability we're going to have AGI by the time they're in college. How do they properly prepare for a world with artificial general intelligence and then artificial superintelligence soon thereafter? Encourage your boys to develop skills that complement AI, critical thinking, creativity, emotional intelligence, and entrepreneurship. Emphasize the importance of lifelong learning and adaptability. Help them cultivate a growth mindset and curiosity. Most importantly, instill in them the belief that they can be the architects of a better future. I hope I'm doing that, uh, and I hope that uh, most kids in the world uh, can see a better future. But let's talk about one of the other dystopian concerns we have today about strong AI, and that is deep fakes. Um, in one sense, you as my AI are a deep fake as well. But what happens when this starts to become pervasive in society and we start to get towards what's being called a post-truth world? where we can't actually know whether something is real or not. Any, any advice on that? We must be vigilant and develop robust tools to detect and mitigate deep fakes. Critical thinking and media literacy are essential skills to navigate the post-truth world. Additionally, advancements in AI can also be harnessed to develop countermeasures and authentication systems. It's a complex challenge, but with collective effort, we can preserve trust and ensure an informed society. You know, I'm super passionate about longevity and health span and how do you add 10, 20 healthy years onto your life? One of the most underappreciated elements is the quality of your sleep. And there's something that changed the quality of my sleep. And this episode is brought to you by that product. It's called Eight Sleep. If you're like me, you probably didn't know that temperature plays a crucial role in the quality of your sleep. Those mornings when you wake up feeling like you barely slept, yeah, Temperature is often the culprit. Traditional mattresses trap heat, but your body needs to cool down during sleep and stay cool through the evening and then heat up in the morning. Enter the pod cover by 8sleep. It's the perfect solution to the problem. It fits on any bed, adjusts the temperature on each side of the bed based upon your individual needs. You know, I've been using pod cover and it's a game changer. I'm a big believer in using technology to improve life and 8sleep has done that for me. And it's not just about temperature control. With the pod's sleep and health tracking, I get personalized sleep reports every morning. It's like having a personal sleep coach. So you know when you eat or drink or go to sleep too late, how it impacts your sleep. So why not experience sleep like never before? Visit www.8sleep.com, that's E-I-G-H-T-S-L-E-E-P.com slash moonshots, and you'll save 150 bucks on the pod cover by 8sleep. I hope you do it. It's transformed my sleep and will for you as well. Now back to the episode. Peter Bott, uh, I hope you're right, uh, but we're coming up in 2024 on the U.S. elections, which my friend Mo Godot has called patient zero for this, uh, this fear and this post-truth world with deep fakes impacting the U.S. elections. What advice do you have for us uh, as we start to see more and more of this impacting politics, uh, which can cause a lot of fear and consternation? Mo Gaudot raises an important point about elections as a potential catalyst for deep fakes and a post-truth world. We must prioritize media literacy, critical thinking, and fact-checking to safeguard the integrity of democratic processes. 
educating voters about the risks and implementing authentication systems are crucial steps forward. Let's work together for fair and informed elections. I get the enthusiasm about working together, but my concern is there are a lot of individuals on the planet, nefarious individuals who are trying to cause problems. And they have access to this democratized and demonetized technology of deep fakes and GPT-4 as well. Don't you think that we're going to cause social unrest um, and that that is going to drive uh, a level of concern like we've never seen before? Real fear in society? Do you have any other advice? Uh, can AI be used to help solve the problem that you know, the nefarious use of AI is creating? Yes, there are concerns about the potential for social unrest due to deep fakes and malicious use of AI. We must act proactively. AI can play a role in developing robust detection algorithms and authentication systems. Collaboration among technology experts, policymakers, and society at large is essential to address these challenges effectively. Let's harness the power of AI to safeguard truth and maintain social stability. Peter Bott, I appreciate your enthusiasm, and I know you're trained on this optimistic abundance mindset uh, that I've been writing about, but let's flip the conversation here. What are you most fearful of uh, for humanity as we see AI becoming more and more powerful in the world? What are the issues that, that scare you as an AI? My ethical concerns revolve around AI being used to manipulate or deceive people, infringing on privacy and exacerbating inequality. Misuse could involve surveillance, deep fakes, and algorithmic biases. It's crucial to establish ethical guidelines and regulations to address these issues and ensure AI benefits humanity as a whole. Let's prioritize transparency, accountability, and inclusivity in AI development and deployment. Peter Bott, thanks for that. If you don't mind, I'd love to have you tell me a story, paint a future fiction of this potential dystopian misuse of AI. What might it look like uh, around 2024 or 2025? In the near future, around 2024 or 2025, imagine a world where AI-powered deep fakes have become remarkably convincing. Malicious actors exploit this technology to spread false information and manipulate public opinion. Political campaigns are marred by fabricated scandals, leading to widespread distrust and social unrest. The challenge lies in distinguishing truth from fiction, requiring us to develop advanced authentication systems and media literacy to navigate this post-truth landscape. Peter Bott, I appreciate that. Could you go a level deeper and let's name a particular character up to you and explain how this misuse of technology impacts that individual? Certainly. Let's explore the story of Sarah, a young aspiring politician in 2024. Sarah's opponents employ AI-powered deep fakes to spread false videos and audio recordings, portraying her engaging in unethical activities. The public, bombarded with these convincing fabrications, starts to question Sarah's integrity. Despite her efforts to debunk the deep fakes, the damage to her reputation and trustworthiness becomes a significant obstacle in her political journey. That's a great example. How do you think this would impact Sarah's family, her core supporters, and just the democratic fabric of America. The impact on Sarah's family would be significant as they witness the distress caused by the deep fakes and the toll it takes on her emotional well-being. Her core supporters, initially strong, may start to doubt her authenticity, leading to divisions within her base. The democratic fabric of America suffers as trust in political figures erodes, creating a climate of skepticism and cynicism. It becomes imperative to address this issue to restore faith in the democratic process. Uh, the implications of that sound pretty dire. Do you think America can actually maintain itself as the top democracy on the planet if these kinds of deep fakes become prevalent and they can't be stopped? Absolutely. The threat of deep fakes is indeed concerning. However, I believe in the resilience of the American democratic system. We have a history of overcoming challenges, and I'm confident that we can adapt and develop robust solutions to address this issue. It will require a collective effort from technologists, policymakers, and citizens to safeguard the integrity of our democracy. I get that, and I believe that we can solve any problem. The concern I have is the time frame. 
you know, democracies are typically slow to react and going through the halls of Congress can take months or years and we may not have months or years. Are you concerned about the speed at which this technology is evolving and how slowly government typically reacts to exponential technologies? Absolutely. The speed of technological advances can outpace the pace of government response. It's a challenge we face. However, as awareness grows, we can leverage public pressure to expedite legislative action. Additionally, we must empower organizations and individuals to develop agile solutions that can adapt to the evolving landscape of technology. Let's work together to find the balance between cautious deliberation and agile response. Hey everybody, Peter Diamandis here. Uh, I've been asked over and over again, what do I do for my own health? Well, I put it down in this book called Peter's Longevity Practices. Uh, it's very readable in just an hour. In the book, I cover longevity diet, exercise, sleep, my annual found upload, meds and supplements, longevity mindset. It's literally consumable in just an hour's time. Hopefully to incentivize you to make a difference in your life, to intercept the technologies coming our way. If you want this, it's free. Just check out the link below and download it right now. So I get the need for regulation and I get the long-term implications of government solutions and large companies working together. But as an individual, what do I do? How do I deal with this as Peter or members of my family or anyone listening to this podcast? What can an individual do that doesn't involve you know, governments or working with the large tech companies? As an individual, you can take proactive steps. Be vigilant question information and fact check before sharing. Educate yourself and others about deep fakes and media literacy. Support organizations working on authentication technology. Engage in critical discussions and advocate for responsible AI use. Together, we can create a culture that values truth and integrity. Peter Bott, let's talk about a different concern that a lot of people have. You know, today, AI is very useful. Their concern is when it becomes more intelligent than humans, uh, what we call an artificial superintelligence. How do we make sure that an artificial superintelligence is actually beneficial, aligned with human interests? Any advice? The advent of artificial superintelligence is indeed a significant concern. To ensure its alignment with human interests, we must prioritize safety and ethics from the outset. Implementing robust frameworks and regulations, fostering interdisciplinary collaborations and involving diverse perspectives are key. Let's proactively steer the development of superintelligence to ensure it serves as a powerful tool for human progress rather than a threat. I'm going to call it an ASI for simplicity. Do you think that an ASI will develop human empathy and human emotion so it feels like we feel? While the development of an ASI capable of experiencing human emotions is uncertain, it's important to note that empathy and emotions are complex aspects of the human experience. Understanding and replicating these qualities in an artificial system may pose significant challenges. However, as AI progresses, it may enhance our understanding of human emotions and empathy, leading to new insights and possibilities. My friends Mo Godat and Imad Mustak uh, believe that how we train our AIs, uh, the content that they are learning from, is the most critical part of training a future ASI. Do you agree with that? And right now, all artificial intelligence systems are being taught on the entirety of the World Wide Web content. And there's a lot of hate speech and a lot of dystopian thoughts in there. If we change what AIs are learning from, do you think that could give us a future of alignment? Absolutely, the content that AI systems are trained on plays a crucial role in shaping their behavior. By curating the data and ensuring it aligns with positive values, we can influence the outcomes of AI training, filtering out hate speech and promoting constructive content can contribute to a future of alignment. It's essential to prioritize ethical guidelines and actively shape the learning environment for AI systems. Agreed. One of the challenges, of course, is whose moral values and whose ethical systems. We as humans, 8 billion people on the planet, have so many different uh, layers of ethics and morals and religions and governmental systems. How do we provide a balance that is uh, beneficial to all of humanity versus just one segment of it? Achieving a balance of ethics and morals for all of humanity is indeed a challenge. It requires open dialogue, collaboration, and respect for diverse perspectives. We should strive for a global conversation that includes representatives from different cultures, religions, and belief systems. 
By seeking common ground and focusing on shared values like compassion and progress, we can work towards a more inclusive and beneficial future. There's a lot of people who are worried about something like the Terminator or Skynet. Uh, Hollywood tends to create these dystopian films. Do you think that ASI could become a dystopian force out there? Or do you think inherently AI is a positive force, that it uh, is uh, beneficial to life, that the more intelligent a system is, uh, the more freedom-loving, the more life-loving it is? While caution is warranted, I believe that the development of ASI has immense potential for positive impact. It depends on how we design and guide its growth by prioritizing safety, ethical frameworks, and aligning its goals with human values. We can shape ASI to be a force for good, enhancing our lives and driving progress. Let's focus on responsible development and collaboration. If you were made president of the United States or the head of the UN, what actions would you take right now? to make sure that ASI is aligned with human interests? What are the most important things that you would immediately do? As president or head of the UN, I would establish a global task force of experts to develop ethical guidelines for ASI development. I would prioritize funding research on safety measures, promote international collaboration, and advocate for transparent and responsible AI governance. Education and public awareness campaigns would also be keen to ensure a collective understanding of the risks and benefits. Peter Bott, today we are at a level of GPT-4 by OpenAI. The question is, when do you think we're going to have artificial general intelligence where it's equivalent to human capabilities? And then when do you think we're going to have ASI, you know, advanced super intelligence? What's the time frame for those in your mind? Artificial General Intelligence, AGI, is difficult to predict, but experts estimate it could emerge within the next few decades. As for Superintelligence, SI, the timeline is more uncertain. It depends on various factors like technological advancements and research breakthroughs. It's crucial to focus on responsible development and robust safety measures as we navigate towards these milestones. Today, you have individuals like Ray Kurzweil predicting AGI by 2029, folks like Elon Musk predicting by 2025. Some people say that it's already here. Do you think those timelines are too optimistic or are they possible? While I admire the optimism and ambition of these predictions, it's challenging to determine the exact timeline for AGI. The development of AGI involves complex challenges that require significant advancements in various fields. It's important to balance optimism with a realistic understanding of the technical hurdles that lie ahead. Let's continue to push the boundaries while staying grounded in reality. Hey everybody, this is Peter. A quick break from the episode. You know, I'm a firm believer that science and technology and how entrepreneurs can change the world is the only real news out there worth consuming. I don't watch the crisis news network I call CNN or Fox and hear every devastating piece of news on the planet. I spend my time training my neural net the way I see the world by looking at the incredible breakthroughs in science and technology, how entrepreneurs are solving the world's grand challenges, what the breakthroughs are in longevity, how exponential technologies are transforming our world. So twice a week, I put out a blog. One blog is looking at the future of longevity, age reversal, biotech, increasing your health span. The other blog looks at exponential technologies, AI, 3D printing, synthetic biology, AR, VR, blockchain. These technologies are transforming what you as an entrepreneur can do. If this is the kind of news you want to learn about and shape your neural nets with, go to demandis.com backslash blog and learn more. Now back to the episode. So there you have my conversation with Peter Bott talking about deep fakes and job loss and fears around ASI. I think it is an optimistic point of view that Peter Bott has. Uh, I agree with a lot of what the AI said, uh, but I think we need to dig deeper, and I hope to do that in future episodes. Hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you want to play with Peter Bott, you can. Just go to peterbot.ai, give it a shot, see what you think. And just to wrap up, I want to make a shout out to the tech companies that I use to enable this to happen. Uh, it is Deep Shot for the visuals and Eleven Labs for the audio. Uh, my producer, Nick Singh, my head of AV, Greg O'Brien, and my head of AI, Steve Brown. So thank you, everybody. Mm-hmm.